everybody has the same conclusion. Minnesota does not move up if they are not going to try to move further up in package pick number 11 plus pick number 23 plus some more to get up into probably the top five to take a quarterback. Compared him to a stronger, bigger Kirk Cousins. He can run that pro style offense, has a good arm, and you know, he was considered a game manager at Michigan, but he's got higher traits than that, higher ability. He just wasn't asked to throw the ball a lot. There's great quarterbacks in the draft. I think he plays quarterback the best of any quarterback in the draft. With every selection of a quarterback in the top 10 of the NFL draft, the future of a franchise hangs in the balance. It is the absolute ultimate risk reward scenario, sending a team into a new golden era or anchoring them in frustration and disappointment for years to come. And it's that jeopardy that makes this one of the best times of the year in the NFL season. And JJ McCarthy's rapid rise up draft boards has made him a fascinating wild card at the heart of the action. He's a great leader, he's a great competitor, he's a great athlete. He can make all the throws that, hey, well, Jim Harbaugh was right. He's the best player in this draft. He deserves to be right up there with Caleb Williams. Is he a savior in the waiting or is he just another bus destined to join a long list of cautionary tales who have done more harm to their team than good? Every draft class has a wild card and this year it happens to be JJ McCarthy. At the beginning of this offseason, JJ was considered a day two prospect. Now looking at it, he's going to go inside the top five picks in this year's draft. He is a fascinating and confusing prospect, teasing people with his impressive arm and deceptive athleticism, but coming out as a truly raw prospect as 20 years old with just two seasons of starts under his belt. And I will say it is clearly a very enticing thing that he does have with his skill set that is making coaches possibly want to trade up and go get him. But memories of the 49ers disastrous trade for Trey Lance surely has to be in the back of general managers' minds. One thing that can be said for sure about JJ McCarthy is that he seems to have a knack for finding himself on the winning team. Mahomes, terrible college record. Jared Goff, terrible college record. Kirk Cousins, highly average. Lamar, nothing special. Uh, Patrick Mahomes ended his college career losing six of his last eight games. He was 0 12 against ranked teams. We just had the Super Bowl. It was Brock Purdy versus Patrick Mahomes. So, like, guys, just look at the results. You don't want to kick James J. McCarthy in the shins because you love him and you love what he stands for. But my God, if my team is going to draft him six overall, and the first thing out of your mouth is, he won at Michigan! I need more than that. I need a lot more. It is a trait that will make him popular in the NFL, and it was evident as early as his high school years. At Nazareth Academy High School in Illinois, McCarthy shined as the starting quarterback, landing the team a state title as a sophomore and falling just short of winning another one as a junior. Across these two seasons, he led the team to a 26-2 record and threw for 6,268 yards and 73 touchdowns. And all of this was going on during COVID, so after his senior season at Nazareth was canceled, canceled due to that, he opted to transfer to IMG Academy to keep the good momentum going. I definitely would have stayed if there was no pandemic because we, we came off a state championship loss and that off season for me and my guys, we, we worked so hard. Here, he immediately helped his new team secure an 8-0 record and recognition as the consensus high school national champs. Like, I mean, this is a lot of winning and it did not go unnoticed. McCarthy was a five-star recruit coming out of high school, landing as the fifth best quarterback in the class. The young quarterback out of Illinois had all the talent and hype to guarantee a long list of prestigious college offers. On that list was Ohio State, who just happened to be McCarthy's favorite team growing up. The dream opportunity to become a Buckeye appeared to be on the way, but a falling out with head coach Ryan Day put an end to that. After telling McCarthy that he wouldn't take a quarterback in the 2021 recruiting class until the end of summer, Ryan Day went back on his word by accepting a commitment from Kyle McCord, who had spent the last couple of years lighting up the Philadelphia Catholic League with Marvin Harrison Jr. at his team. McCarthy did not take well to this news, quickly committing to the Buckeyes rivals Michigan and proudly telling the world, I used Used to love them. Now I want to kill them. Coach Harbaugh was thrilled. When I committed, he jumped up and down and gave me a hug. And the energy in the room was going through the roof. And it felt like one of the best decisions I ever made. Everyone absolutely loves a player with a chip on their shoulder. 
And credit to Ryan Day for giving JJ McCarthy that chip on his shoulder by taking Kyle McCord instead of him. JJ's time at Michigan started as a backup to sophomore Cade McNamara, occasionally coming in to finish games but not making any starts. Having seen glimpses of McCarthy over his freshman season, head coach Jim Harbaugh allowed McCarthy to challenge for the starting role in the lead up to the 2022 season. Both players put out strong cases as to why they should be the starters, and due to that, Harbaugh extended the competition into the first two weeks of the season. A 136 yard and one touchdown performance by McNamara in week one was completely blown out of the water by 229 yards and three touchdowns from McCarthy in week two against Hawaii. JJ completed 11 of his 12 passes in that game to ensure there was little doubt about who should be the starting quarterback for the Wolverines moving forward. With McCarthy at the helm, Michigan easily carved their way through the Big Ten and fell just short of reaching the national championship game. Defeating Ohio State in his first season as a starter was a standout for the year, but McCarthy's two interceptions in the college football semifinals were pivotal in causing them to lose by 51 points to 45 in a thriller against TCU. McCarthy finished his sophomore season with 2,719 yards, 22 touchdowns, and five interceptions under his belt, which was enough to earn him second team all Big Ten recognition. He had certainly showed signs of competent quarterback play, but his 2,719 yards couldn't even crack the top 50 in the nation. And due to this, it triggered some speculation as to really how much does he contribute to this Wolverines offense. Michigan, the way they played, it's not sexy. It's not conducive to really quarterback friendly. Quarterback friendly and Michigan with Jim Harbaugh as a head coach do not go together in the same sentence, right? Michigan boasted an elite offensive line, one of the best running back stables in the college game, and a head coach who thrived in the NFL. And this led to many questions as to truly, was he really a great player and a great quarterback or just a really good game manager? His junior season would have been a great opportunity for him to solidify that he was a great quarterback, but a month away from the draft now, he really didn't do anything this past year to prove that he really was a great quarterback. This time managing to convert their strong regular season into a national championship success, but McCarthy's role in the offense remained a hot topic of conversation. There were five games throughout the season where he was asked to throw the ball less than 20 times, most notably an eight pass game, yes, eight passes against Penn State, in a shocking game against Bowling Green, of all people, when he had eight completions and three interceptions. And and yes, in fairness, McCarthy wasn't really needed because of the quality of the opponent that Michigan was playing. Because I mean, when you do look at it, they were averaging like 35, I think almost 36 points without him really throwing the ball that much. And they were winning these games by a wide margin still. They honestly were mostly just biding their time as they awaited another crucial clash against the Ohio State Buckeyes. And this time there was even more motivation for McCarthy who would be going up against Kyle McCord, the man who took his role as a Buckeye. And in a much closer game than the 2022 edition, McCarthy's 80% completion rate with 148 yards and a touchdown helped the Wolverines notch another win over their rivals. And it looked like a competent performance by McCarthy, but it would be a stretch to say that he was the difference maker in that game. Instead, the Wolverines have Blake Corm's two touchdowns and a last minute interception by Rod Moore to thank for the six point victory. The win over Ohio State set up a Big Ten championship clash against Iowa, who posed very little danger to the Wolverines in a 26 to zero drubbing. This gave Michigan an unbeaten 13 and 0 record in a first place ranking. Their reward was a date with Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide in the semifinals. And, and look, if you're a JJ McCarthy truther and Stan, that's a game that you look at and you tell people about. And on that 75 yard drive, he looked as cool and calm as ever. And that's what makes a great prospect in the NFL. Things like saying his three touchdowns were crucial in helping the team reach their first national championship game since 1997. And he won the MVP award for his efforts are all things that you can say that would make him a great prospect. I think it matters. I think 27 and one is a real stat and national champions a real stat and 15 and 0 in last season is a real stat. And the fact that he is so beloved by everyone in that building, including his head coach yeah. who has seen everybody, it matters. So to me, it's a major plus point. However, if you're on the opposing side and you believe that McCarthy is going to be an absolute bust, 
If you look at one week later when he played on the biggest stage in the national championship against Washington, he didn't put together really that convincing of a game. Despite the team securing the title, McCarthy completed just 10 of 18 passes for 140 yards and no touchdowns against one of the worst passing defenses in the nation. Like, I mean, Washington came into this game as the 114th ranked passing defense in the nation. And for McCarthy to only walk out with a 55% completion rate and 140 yards to show for it, it really just wasn't that convincing in my opinion. And that's exactly what these playoffs and last two games of his career implicate is that there's just so much confusion about how good is he really and what kind of JJ McCarthy are we going to get when he does get to that next level? Like, yes, the flashes are there when you do look at the Alabama game and you go, damn, this guy's actually pretty good. He can throw the ball. But then you go to one week later and you're like, this guy doesn't know how to throw the ball and they, they, he needs a running back. If he doesn't have a running back, he's going to end up not great in the NFL. Like, I mean, look at Brock Purdy. Is he really that good? There's a ton of talent on their team and they talk about it all the time. One first offense. They had so many guys. How many guys you say they had at the 18 combine? 18 guys at the combine. 18, 18 record. guys at the combine. combine. A record. And that's the talent that he was surrounded with. And like I said earlier, his performance against Washington's pass defense only added to the fire to that theory. For NFL scouts, he's an absolute nightmare to get your head around. The sample size is so small. And I mean, how do you evaluate someone who has played the majority of that small sample size in a dream offense against an inferior opposition. And like, I mean, there is no doubt JJ McCarthy is a winner. That's all he's done his entire life. A 34 and two record with two different teams in high school was followed by a 28 and one record as the starter at Michigan. For those that are counting, that's just three losses to his name. His knack for winning is second to none. And it is a testament to how he has operated the Wolverines offense. But the question remains, how many wins were because of him? The Wolverines were very much a run first team and when McCarthy was called upon to pass the ball, his wide receivers were often wide open. And don't get me wrong, of course he did show great arm talent when he was delivering strikes over the middle, but I mean there was just so much more to be concerned about. Like I mean when looking at him when he's passing outside of the numbers or even down the field, his numbers are questionable. And yes, I know you guys are all going to say, well look at his pro day. Yeah, go look at Zach Wilson's pro day and where is he now? He's a backup. He's he's terrible. He ruined the Jets. And like even in actual games, his ball placement is very, very shaky. Like just go back and watch the film. Like NFL windows are so much smaller than college windows and McCarthy's inconsistencies with just hitting open wide receivers shows up so much. It's just not something that you want in an NFL quarterback. Another thing that's absolutely crucial in the NFL game is moving through your levels and reads and the anticipation you need to make certain throws. Bearing in mind the majority of McCarthy's opponents at college were far inferior teams, it was concerning not to see him read the field better. There were plenty of signs of hesitation when progressing through his reads and a wariness of letting it rip. This kind of decision making is things that honestly ruin careers in the NFL when a rookie does get there. And it's something that needs to be looked at in McCarthy too. And honestly, it, it really is something that more people I'm surprised aren't talking about and why they're still even considering to be a top five pick. Many people, including Daniel Jeremiah in his latest mock draft, are projecting the Minnesota Vikings to trade up to the fourth pick to take McCarthy as the future of their franchise. Like, I mean, do people not remember Trey Lance from a couple years ago? He was another raw prospect with a very small sample size. And how did that turn out? Please remind me again. Like, I can't help but think that people are absolutely just glossing over the fact that of the situation that McCarthy found himself in. Like, how can you justify trading up to take McCarthy for a guy that was barely even considered to be the best player on his own team? Like, the dude literally couldn't have asked for an easier setup to make even better stat lines to prove his worth. And he honestly, again, didn't do much with it. Like, look at the last six games of the season. McCarthy averaged just 142 yards per game, which tells you all you need to know about his utilization during the most important stretch of the year. Any team that is willing to trade up into the top five to take that kind of talent, like that raw talent, has to be just absolutely mad. Like, listen, this literally has Zach Wilson or Trey Lance written all over it again. And hell, it could even be as bad as one of the worst picks in the last 20 years. And look, I know I'm gonna be called crazy for this, but like, 
Jamarcus Russell went first overall, so it's going to be very hard to beat that. But I mean, this could nearly be the second worst pick after that if he does go inside the top five. And like, look, I'm not saying that it's going to be an awful career for him. I'm just saying trading up to the top five to get him is what's going to screw people if he doesn't pan out how you want to. I think honestly, if he was a late first rounder or even early second rounder and he got the Jordan Love treatment, you probably could justify it then, but going inside the top five after the skill set and the resume that he's put together, it just isn't convincing to me. He has obviously flashed some good things on tape, but his biggest asset is his age. At just 21 years old, he still has a lot to learn and could potentially mold to be a useful player if given the right opportunities to learn as a backup for a year or two. But in the modern day NFL, Patience is becoming a forgotten skill, and I worry a team like Minnesota might be about to make a horrible mistake. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of JJ McCarthy? Is he legit or is he a legitimate bust? Let me know down in the comment section below, and as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.